So far, so good. How are you guys feeling? You guys feeling good? All right, we're going to bring up next uh, uh, a member of Paya's next generation, one of the younger members of Paya. Um, this next gentleman is uh, the first Iranian-American to graduate uh, from West Point. He was also recognized by uh, President Clinton in 2011 with the Clinton Global in Initiative. Uh, and he's also an analyst for Voice of America. Please welcome Amir Bagherpour. In his famous inaugural speech, President John F. Kennedy uttered those famous words, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. <laughs> While living in the capital, we are surrounded by men and women who are serving the nation. Um, and, be, and being the center um, of this capital, we want to basically recognize two gentlemen with whom I will have the honor to speak in a few minutes and talking about their exemplary service and commitment to the country. Before I introduce them to you, let's watch the introductory video about them, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause. I'd like to introduce you to you, Bayar Shirzad and Ramin Askar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a great panel, um, particularly being in uh, Washington, uh, D.C. Uh, nation's capital. Uh, both of you have a very interesting uh, uh, career serving the, the nation. Um, both of you have uh, practiced law, uh, but uh, when I take a look at uh, your careers, you have served in different capacities and you have a very unique uh, path that you've taken to getting to where, where you are. Um, Ramin, you are a career diplomat about 15 years uh, serving at the State Department. Um, Fariar, you have served in many capacities for the government as well, but you've taken a different path going from 
business and then uh, uh, transitioning into uh, government. How did each of you end up in the uh, various positions that uh, you are in now? And how did you end up in the various positions that you are in a government? Uh, Fayar? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a huge honor to be a part of this program and to be a part of our community. You know, it's a wonderful to, um, and a huge honor to get selected as somebody who's uh, symbolic of the successes that our community has. And I know, you know, Maz made a joke at the outset about people in the audience looking at us and saying that, you know, they're more successful than we are. I don't think either Ramin or I have any doubt that there's many, many people in this audience who've made quite a mark. And so, uh, so we, we, we sit here uh, very much uh, as representatives of all of you out here. Uh, well, it's a hard question to answer, you know, in terms of how we got to where we are. I think, uh, for me at least, you know, I was always interested, partly because of my father's career as an Iranian diplomat in the intersection of policy, politics, and uh, international affairs. And so, even starting in high school, I tried to find my way into areas where I could get involved in that. I was a volunteer in the Reagan campaigns when I was in high school, even before I became a citizen. And one thing led to another, and ultimately, um, uh, it became a professional calling, with law being an important part of that. Uh, and I became somebody who, you know, developed some expertise and some experience, and some became recognized in my field. Uh, and from that, I was able to uh, to get the opportunities that my career ultimately presented to me. Ami, in in my case, I, I started out in a very similar way in uh, the law, and uh, wherever I went, I continued to search. Uh, and run into issues that involved Iran and the United States. And I felt that uh, this was a central focus of being an Iranian at this time in history. And I decided that it would be uh, a worthwhile application of, of this one chance we have at life to try to get involved in working on that issue. I, uh, when, I, when I was uh, younger, when I was in college and graduate school and law school, I really didn't know the channel to pursue to try to work on that issue. A lot of people I encounter in the next gen have something like that, a kind of a generalized idea that they want to be involved in international affairs and in resolving conflict. But they don't know what the channels are. Well, 20 years ago, that meant a meandering path through academia, law, everything else, and eventually winding up almost by default into the Foreign Service and then serving that career. Now, thanks to PIA and the Next Generation program and the uh, mentorship program, there are a lot of uh, folks that are experienced, like Far Faryar myself, who can help to guide people as they search. And that search, for me, led to service for the government because I wanted to give something back to the United States of America. And because I cared so much about my homeland, I wanted it to be, and this made it much harder than it would have otherwise been to involve Iran as well. So that's not the path for everyone, but that's the path I chose. So, so Ramin, um, I, I know as a Foreign Service officer, you live the majority of your career outside of the United States, um, serving abroad at uh, embassies and consulates, et cetera. Um, what is life uh, generally like as a, as a diplomat, as a foreign service officer? It's, it's a very exciting life for people who like change. Every two or three years, you move to a different country, you're generally doing a different kind of job. I've been a political officer, an economic officer, a public diplomacy officer, a consular officer. That's where I met most of the Iranians that I've uh, encountered, actually, as a consular officer was, uh, was very uh, worthwhile. And, um, you, you get to change countries, you get to change languages, you get to change cultures. There are times when I came back to the United States where I felt like I was coming to a foreign country because I had spent so much time abroad. But the interesting thing about service in the, in, in, in the State Department and the Foreign Service is you never feel more proud of being an American or more about what being an American is until you're overseas. And that's very unusual and that's, not, that's counterintuitive. You would think that, well, you're in the United States, you would feel what it's like to be an American. But really, when you see the way the, way the rest of the world has decided to order itself and its affairs, and you see that the experiment that's going on in the, the United States, which is not perfect, but is, is, is quite impressive, you really get a sense of uh, pride that you're able to represent the United States overseas. And it's, 
it's a tribute to this country that an Iranian American can represent the United States overseas. This was no easy thing in a place like Saudi Arabia or Iraq or uh, the Persian Gulf, where uh, people would see me and they would wonder, wait a minute, we were expecting someone with uh, blonde hair and blue eyes. Who, what, who are you? Are you, are you an interpreter? What's going on? So uh, it was, it was, uh, it was a, a learning experience for a lot of people, and I, I encourage a lot of people to, to feel like uh, as uh, citizens of this country, uh, it's part of our uh, duty to this country, uh, if at all possible, to take some of the unbelievable talent that is a, a, a resident in this room and in the community and, and contribute to, the, to uh, the United States of America, which certainly needs all the help it can get right now. <laughs> well, um, Thayar, um, you served on the National Security Council. Uh, you have uh, represented President Bush at the G8 summit. Um, so you, you, you have uh, quite an interesting experience and a mix of working not just in business but for government. Uh, what do you see as some of the similarities between business and government? And what do you see as some of the uh, big differences having experience in both sectors? Well, that's a really good question. You know, I think as uh, in business, you have an accountability to your owners, to your shareholders, and so that's a very um, focused uh, uh, measures of accountability that you have, and the metrics that apply to you are usually fairly uh, circumscribed. I think in government, and I think this is in a piece of advice or insight I would share for people who are thinking about public service, uh, you are accountable to the public, and that accountability is a very heavy responsibility that all of us who pursue careers in public service, either as career officials like Ramin or people in political capacities like myself or people who pursue elective office, you have to understand that the excitement of public service, the privilege of public service also brings with it a heavy burden and of responsibility and accountability uh, that you carry with you at every moment. And so there's virtually no aspect of how you carry yourself when you are in positions of public service that is off limits to scrutiny. And so it's something that I think everybody has to understand that when they want to do a position, if they aspire to a job of public service, or if they're in a position of public service, it's a heavy responsibility you have because you are the representative of the American people. And so when Ramin and his postings overseas, me and my positions as a negotiator, uh, working with other countries, it was very much standing there in the room at the table on behalf of all the American people. And it's a huge uh, 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 burden that you carry, but it's one that we, ca with those of us who do it, carry with pride. And I think it's something that people, particularly the young people as they think about it, should just keep in mind. Thank you. Now, um, just based on my limited experience, uh, I'm in an interesting situation because I now work in an environment where there are uh, 200 Iranians uh, working together. And I don't think there's any, anywhere in the US government where you have so many Iranians working on the same floor. Um, but I still have this, the, the experience of being the only Iranian. Um, so, so when people say, uh, what, well, how is it working with 200 Iranians? Because there's this myth that Iranians can't necessarily get along or they can't work with, with each other. <laughs> uh, you know, my, my answer is, well, it's better than being the only Iranian. Uh, based on your experience, particularly in government, did you ever have to overcome any obstacles because of your Iranian heritage? Um, because there are so few Iranians actually serving in government. Rami. I, I would say that uh, growing up at the time that uh, I did and that many of the people here have done in the, in the aftermath of uh, the hostage crisis and the estrangement between the two countries, there always was a question lingering in the minds of some Americans about Iranians and their, their fealty to the United States and the values of the United States. It created a situation where each new environment I went into, I almost had to prove uh, more than uh, some others might have that, that aspect of it. Because uh, 
Look, most Americans associate Iranians with a few uh, relatively recent events which are not particularly positive from the United States perspective. And so they come in with that, that mindset. And so when they see you, they don't have a lot of counterfactual information. Now, Paya is working very hard on creating that alternative narrative of what Iranian Americans have accomplished. But when I was coming uh, up through the system, uh, there wasn't any counter narrative, really. There was just kind of the narrative. And the narrative was, uh, Boy, we need to watch this one. And uh, uh, I, I, I did what I could to prove to people uh, uh, that I was uh, you know, a, a committed, uh, faithful public servant. But ultimately, um, that has been the fate of every immigrant community as they've come through, has had to kind of prove themselves that their loyalties and their, and their primary interests and motivations are about serving the United States of America. We're not talking about everybody taking this perspective. This is if you want to be a public servant for the United States of America. You really do have to demonstrate that your first inclination is what is good for the American people. And so uh, that's what I, I, I tried to emphasize. And eventually, after 15 years or so, uh, the, the, we're at a different place as a community. Uh, people coming through now uh, like yourself or others in the next gen, really don't have that situation. There are enough counterfactuals that they know people like Farriar, like uh, someone who's kind of come a little bit later, Dr. Nasser. They see that there are many of these people around that are such successful examples of what Iranian Americans can contribute. And there's, there's really not that lingering question anymore. And eventually, we, we think it'll be a situation where they'll actually seek out Iranian Americans for the quality of their contributions and never even think twice that they happen to be, have roots to the country of Iran, which they, they, they should. <clears throat> One, 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 one last thing. I, I think uh, as Americans, people should be proud to have people who come from that, that culture and heritage because it is one of the, um, it, it, is, it is one of the world, world's great civilizations historically and the last couple decades of difficult times notwithstanding, uh, we've done so much to prove that we can make those contributions that it's time that uh, any of those lingering questions in people's minds go away. Thayer? Um, I, you know, my experience was a little different in the sense that I, when I first went into public service, and that was when I uh, went in to become the trade, International Trade Council on the U.S. Senate Committee, Senate Finance Committee, uh, I was actually very self-conscious about what it would mean as an Iranian-American uh, to be in the position that I, I was interviewing for and then ultimately I was um, you know, given in terms of joining the staff of the chairman of that committee. And I always felt like people were watching me as an Iranian-American because there were no others to speak of, uh, no other Iranian-Americans that I knew of working in Congress. Uh, um, or certainly anywhere near around where I was, and I didn't know of any in the administration at the time. Uh, this was during the Clinton era. Uh, so I was quite self-conscious about it, I have to confess, when I first went in. But when you talk about the, the hurdles to overcome, or the burden, I realized the biggest hurdle I had to uh, uh, overcome was to really get over myself, because it was really a non-issue. Um, people didn't care. People really cared, as from my experience, as to how well I did my job. And this held true um, in the various positions I ultimately ended up ha having after that. And it was really an important thing to kind of come to terms with because when the question became whether I saw myself and could put myself forward as a potential you know, assistant secretary uh, to run one of the bureaus of the Commerce Department or to get a position, um, a position at the White House, it was really an issue of the merits that I brought to the table rather than an issue of uh, the ethnicity cutting one way or the other. And so for the young people, I think as Rami said, the field is wide open right now. And I think, uh, you know, we, you know, I, you know, the interesting thing about what Paya does, and I think maybe Rami and I, Amir, you too, I think understand this, is in a funny way, as a community, we help our community become bigger and better in terms of our contributions as Americans. Because we become confident and proud of our heritage as Iranian Americans and yet become, and with that become 
and more capable of contributing in every possible way that we can in whatever field, including for those who are interested and inclined in this way in public service. And, um, and I think the limits are really uh, self-imposed to the extent people want to pursue that path. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank um, Thayar, Ramin, I'd like to thank you for your service. Ladies and gentlemen, Thayar Shuzad, Ramin Askad. Thanks.